Hey, what's up? My name is George, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I make $4,799.26 per month on YouTube without showing my face or making any of the videos myself. All right, so here we have a screenshot, but of course, I'm going to take you behind the analytics and actually show you that this is true, right? So you can see for the month of November 2023, one of my channels right here made $3,500. And then if we go to the affiliate marketing side right here, share a sale, this is a dashboard. But let me actually take you behind the channel and show you. So right here, you can see this is one of my channels. You can see every day it's hovering at about $100 to $130 per day, which is pretty good. October was $3,300, November was three point five, dollars and December so far is $550, right? So it's pretty good. And then if we go to my affiliate marketing side, you can see that if we go to payments and past revenue, then you can see that um, October, it was 1.4 thousand, uh, November 1.3 thousand, right? So it's pretty good, right? You can see these are all the payments. And this is how I'm able to generate this money, right? This is how I make my money on the internet, online, through YouTube and through affiliate marketing. So my goal for this training today is to give away 100% of my knowledge and equip you with tools and strategies. So by the end of this video, you can take this information and do it by yourself. Okay, I won't be holding anything back. So pay attention. Now, how do I do it? Let me first tell you a story. So I published my first YouTube video right here. You can see if I sort by oldest on my YouTube channel 11 years ago, and it is a very cringy video where I try to explain you how to use Gar GarageBand and I kind of walk you through, um, you know, making a simple beats, right? Then I kind of went into a little bit into fitness and then other niches. So I've been at this game for a very long time. Uh, I have a 1.2 thousand videos, 1.2 K thousand videos, right? And I have over 10,000 subscribers probably at the time you're watching this video already. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that it took me 30 videos to make my first winner video. Now, I'm going to explain in a second what I mean by winner, but here is the video itself that kind of made me, uh, was my first winner, right? So it's uh, how to drop ship on Amazon. It's a complete tutorial. I was back in the day uh, doing e-commerce. I was selling, I was connecting Shopify and Amazon, doing drop shipping there, right? So this video, the time I'm recording, it was posted three years ago. It has 53,000 views. And if we look right here, uh, this video has generated me $1.8 thousand dollars, and uh, if you look at the screenshot very carefully, you can, if you're, uh, if you're paying attention, you can see what is the trick. But I'm going to explain to you in a second what is the secret sauce, the secret strategy that I use to generate money. Right? This video was posted 1,350 days ago, and it is still generating me money uh, every single day. Okay, so that's that. Now. It took me another three years <laughs> to figure out why this video worked and how to replicate and scale this success. And today I'm giving it all for free to you, right? So if you saw a video, now if I saw a video like this six to seven years ago when I was just starting out, I would have taken this information and run with it, okay? If someone told me really what I'm about to tell you in this video, I would just went all in on this thing, okay? Because it really does work and there's a reason why. So. What is the secret sauce? Well, first, let's briefly understand how YouTube works. And to do that, we first need to uh, look at the two different uh, types of content on YouTube, okay? So it's fairly easy to understand, just bear with me and I'm gonna explain, okay? Now, the first type of content is recommended content, okay? So YouTube recommends your video on the homepage, right? When you just open youtube.com, that's the homepage, those are the videos that get recommended, right? So the first strategy, right, is you make videos for the homepage. And now, if your video is enticing enough, people will click and watch your video. If people like your video, YouTube will then recommend your video to more people, okay? That's kind of how it goes. Who is the king of this? Of course, Mr. Beast, right? When you think about browse content or recommended content, you think about this guy. One day ago, he posted this video, he got 56 million views, right? Now, the problem is that this is way too competitive. And the reason I know this is because I tried it for three years, for three years, I try to get recommended on the homepage. And it didn't work because I was trying all kinds of different things. I was going hard on editing on the script writing on the, you know, everything. And it's just, it didn't click, you know, it, I didn't get recommended. 
because you are competing with huge creators with unlimited budget like Mr. Beast and many, many others, right? And he has spent a decade more learning how YouTube works and what the audience wants. So if you try to go down this route, you are guaranteed to fail, I promise. <laughs> now, second thing is something which is called search content. I said, if you're careful, if you're paying attention, you will see from that screenshot before uh, what I mean, right? So what do I mean by search content? Now. YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google, okay? And Google owns YouTube. How convenient. Now, people search for how to do something or they search for information, how to solve their problem, or people search for something every single second of every single day. That's just a fact, okay? How many times have you searched for something today? The day yesterday, the day before that, right? So, these people, yourself included, myself included, everyone, we are not looking to be entertained per se, right? They are simply looking for information to help solve their problem, okay? So, for example, this is one of my videos that I posted two months ago. It is how to watch local channels on Samsung Smart TV. Now, if you ask me, how do you watch local channels on Samsung Smart TV? I wouldn't be able to tell you because I don't know. But Google knows, right? And if I find a gap in the market, which I'm gonna explain in a second how to do that and what this whole thing is about, you can make a video. Well, you don't actually make the video yourself. I'm kind of uh, <laughs> running ahead of myself here. But the point is, right, people are searching for this. And if you provide them with this video, if you provide them with this information, they're gonna click, watch, say thank you, and you're gonna get paid for that. You can see this video is just one minute and 36 seconds long. It has 12,000 views and it posted two months ago, okay? So this video right here, uh, you can see that it got 12.2 thousand views and it made me $54 in revenue, okay? And it gets about 1.8 thousand views every 48 hours. Cool. Now this video cost me $3 to make, right? So my profit is $51. This, this video literally cost me $3 to make, like I'm not even kidding, right? And I'm gonna show you in a second why. Now, this doesn't sound much, right? $50 profit, nah, what do you think, right? But you know what's the trick? The trick is volume. Remember how I mentioned that I have 1.2 thousand videos on my channel? Well, if every single one of those videos that I post makes me $50 in profit, right? And I multiply that by a thousand videos, that's consistent cash generating machine, right? Cash printing machine. So imagine you have a thousand videos making you $1 per day, right? This video that I just showed you that I posted, you know, two months ago, in the last seven days, it has made me $15. How crazy is this? You post this video two months ago, right? You don't even make the video yourself. You forget about it. You maybe don't even know, like I don't even know that I posted this video. And then two months later in one week, this video makes me $15 passively. Now imagine you multiply this by a thousand videos and that is the ultimate strategy, okay? And that's exactly what I've been doing. As you can see, like I showed you, you know, in November, one of my channels generated $3,500. I'm also making money through affiliate marketing. And the best part, I don't show my face or make any of the videos myself because oftentimes when people think about YouTube, they think, oh, I gotta be a creator, I gotta be in front of the camera that couldn't be for further from the truth because there's a big number of people, there's a lot of people on YouTube who make a lot of money on YouTube without ever showing their face or making any of the videos themselves, okay? It's called a faceless creator economy, okay? Something which is, has been blowing up lately. So this is that video, right? How to watch local channels on smart, Samsung Smart TV. Look at this video. Literally the whole video through is just white background. There's black text, right? Explaining how to actually do this. And you might be thinking, what? Like, would people actually watch that? Well, people lie, but numbers don't. As you can see, numbers talk for themselves. So yes, people do watch this because sometimes they don't wanna read, they want to listen. Someone explain to them, right, how to actually do this. And that's the ultimate trick, okay? So let's get down now to the step-by-step -step on how you can actually do this for yourself, okay? First, let's look at the list of tools that we will be using, okay? Remember, my goal for this video training is so by the end of it, you can take all this information and run with it yourself, okay? So, first, vidIQ. Second, 11 labs. 
Third, answer the public. Fourth, chat GPT and share a sale. Now, these are not all the tools, but this, like, if you take just these tools, you can do everything that I do just with these tools, okay? Chat GPT for script writing, share a sale for affiliate marketing, answer the public to get um, questions and to, to see what people are searching for online, okay? This is like a crazy database. Eleven Labs helps you synthesize your voice or someone else's voice and create AI-generated content, okay? So you don't actually have to record any videos yourself. And vidIQ for also for researching different topics and keywords that you want to make the videos about, okay? So there we have it. Second, YouTube channel options. So obviously, if you're going to be posting videos on YouTube, right, you need to have a YouTube channel. Now, there are different ways to get a channel, right? You can start a channel from scratch and just monetize it organically yourself. Second option is you can buy a pre-monetized channel, okay? I know so many people who have done that and there is no problem with that, okay? And the third option is monetize your channel via an SMM panel, all right? So let me just kind of show you here real quick. So if you want to buy a pre-monetized channel, you can go to accsmarket.com slash YouTube, okay? I personally know a lot of people, some of the top players in this space who do this, okay? And they have bought many, many channels and this is where you do it, okay? This is a trusted website. It's kind of like a marketplace. So the marketplace itself is trusted and there are sellers on there who sell channels, right? So make sure that when you are going to be picking uh, who to buy a channel from, that he is a verified uh, seller and he has track record, okay? That's how you go about this. Now, and you can see there are all these different channels, right, that you can look into. Second re uh, way is if you want to, for example, monetize your channel and just kind of buy views and subscribers, you can also do that. That has also worked for me in the past. I've actually done that. And you can do it on smmworldpanel.com, uh, okay? You can see that I have some money here on the account and you can buy all kinds of different things here, okay? And if you're wondering if it's gonna work or not, trust me, this works. A lot of people do this, right? Just for monetization purposes. Obviously, you don't wanna do this to like get views, to, to get money from that, but to monetize a channel, it should be no problem, okay? So let's talk about naming and branding. Okay, this is really straightforward. Channel name doesn't matter, right? Just use ChatGPT or Namelix to get a name inspiration. It really doesn't matter, right? Whatever it is, it's fine. Branding also doesn't matter if channel is monetized because remember, we're not creating like this persona. We're not creating a brand. We're just, we're just going to be answering people's questions and queries, okay? The one important thing is do not publish to subscribers. What do I mean by this? Well, when you're going to be publishing videos, okay? For example, I did this thing here. When you're scrolling down in the settings, you wanna untick publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. Why? Well, because let's say that, you know, you're gonna be making videos about everything, right? And let's say that people are subscribing to your channel because they wanted to um, get an answer to the question how to watch local channels on Samsung Smart TV. Cool. But then let's say that you make another video comparing Shopify versus Wix. Well, those two people are not necessarily, those two audiences are not necessarily compatible, right? So if you publish to subscriptions, those people who subscribe for Samsung Smart TV, right, are going to get a notification and they're going to be like, what is this? I don't want that. And then they're going to unsubscribe, right? So to make sure that people don't unsubscribe from your channel when they get a notification, we untick publish to subscriptions fees and notify subscribers, okay? Hope that makes sense so far. So systemizing workflow. So let's talk about how to systemize our workflow, right? because this is called YouTube automation, right? So we're going to be getting other people to create videos for us, right? And in order to have to, 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 to do that, we need to have a system in place, right? So there are different tools that I use to systemize the workflow, right? The first one is called Slack communication. Second one is a Trello board, right? So Trello is kind of this like drag and drop thing. Uh, pretty straightforward to use. Zapier, okay? The Zapier is an integration tool that helps you connect different softwares together. Uh, Google Sheets, I personally use this myself. I really like a Google Sheet. And by the way, I'm going to have underneath this video, there's going to be a link to a Google Drive uh, where you'll be able to download additional assets 
with this presentation, right? So for example, uh, this right here is my, um, my management sheet tool that I've created myself. It took me a very long time to figure out how to do this. But this is kind of how I go about creating my workflow, right? My system. This works for me. For a lot of my friends, Trello works better, but I like a management, like a, like a Google Sheet. So you can see I put a keyword here. Then I have, like, if you have different script writers, you can say, like, for example, you know, either John or then, you know, you have Max or whatever. And then they're going to write. So they're going to know that this is, this is the video that they need to write the script for, right? Then they're going to use ChatGPT to write it. If you have an affiliate for this, right, for example, then you can write, for example, that, you know, we have a Shopify affiliate. Cool. So then in the, in the flow, your freelancer is going to know to make sure to add the Shopify affiliates when he's going to be publishing the video onto your channel. Okay? Makes sense. Notes, if there's any additional notes like, hey, make sure to mention this or don't mention that or whatever. Um, the actual script, so here, this is where, you, this is where the script writer is going to add a link to the script that he created. Okay? So let's say the keyword is how to down, download Instagram Reels video. So he's going to write it, John is going to write the script, and then he's going to paste the link to a Google Doc right here. Okay? And then he's going to say when he has completed this. And this is to make sure that um, the managerial thing, so the payments, is accurate. So if you pay like weekly or biweekly or monthly, you will be able to go back and see, okay, how many scripts were created. Okay. And then we have the recorder. So this is the name of the person who's going to be recording this, right? So there are different ways to go about this, right? If you have a person who's going to be recording the scripts, right, from the Philippines, for example, then you can say, that, you know, for example, Joy, <laughs> right, is going to be recording this script, right? And then, or Anna is going to be recording this script, okay? Then once she has recorded the script or recorded the video, she is then going to post the link to that recording right here in the recording tab. Then once she has uh, posted this, then the editor, okay, let's say, for example, his name is Mo. Okay, Mo is going to take that video and he is going to edit it, for example, if needed. And you can see that automatically it says uh, it adds the completion date, right? As soon as I add the editor here, uh, it's going to see that the completed date, okay? And then uh, timestamps. So timestamps are important as those like chapters in a video. So your, your, your freelancer, when he's editing the editor, he can add the, the timestamp timestamps here and then you can just copy paste them or not you but the person who's going to be publishing the videos just to make sure it's just an additional benefit for the viewer and then thumbnail is also a link to a thumbnail which you have a separate person for okay and then you have different statuses here okay so for example when you're just starting out right you can say for example that uh, script is pending right so that means that we are waiting for the script to be written so I have added a keyword, I have added a script writer, and now we're waiting for the script to be done. Cool. Script is ready. So then it's going to get assigned to one of the recorders, right? So let's say it's me, or let's say that it's Daniel, or let's say that it's Bilal, okay? So then it's in the, we, we basically see like where the video, in which stage of the process it is. Cool. Then when it's done, let's say that it's, you know, it's completed, um, or actually recording pending, sorry, recording pending, right? And then we have the recorder. Right, so then Anna knows that she needs to record the script. Once it's complete, right, she's going to say, for example, that this is complete. Now, this indicates for the next person that this video now needs to be published. Okay? So then they go ahead, they take the thumbnail, they take the video, they publish it, and then they change the status to publish. So once it goes green, that means that this video is now live on YouTube. Okay? So you can download and then completion date and comments. Okay? Pretty straightforward. So you can download this again, this template is going to be um, a Google Drive link down underneath this video. So you can grab that along with uh, other resources as well that I'm going to show you now in a second in this video. Okay? So that's what I use. Dropbox for storing or Google Drive. I use Google Drive myself. I have two terabytes. Pretty straightforward, right? This is the one I just showed you. And then, now the next step is finding your first freelancer. Okay, this is exciting. Different platforms. Okay, so freelance platforms. I use my favorite one is Upwork.com. It's clean. Um, they have a good screening process, right? So the people there are legit. Um, Freelancer.com. I've used that before. Fiverr.com. Onlinejobs.ph. People per hour. I've used all of them. 
You can try them for yourself. My favorite one is Upwork.com. That's the one I use, right? It's a freelancing platform. Uh, people from all over the world uh, kind of submit their applications, right? Then you can post a job. They can apply. You guys can connect. You guys can talk, okay? That's it. Pretty straightforward. So countries with most value for money are India, Pakistan, Philippines, South America, Vietnam, etc. right? So what we're doing is the average salary there is three to six hundred dollars per month, right? Like a full time job. So what we're doing is we are leveraging cheap overseas labor to create cash printing assets, right? So we're going to be paying about two to three dollars for a three minute video. Okay. And that video is then going to go on and generate us more money than what we paid for it. Okay. That makes sense. If we're going to be making anywhere from three to eight minutes, I recommend paying about five to $10 per video. This is price per video, right? And eight to 12 minutes, 10 to $15, right? Depends on how complex you want the video to be, etc. But this is the general pricing kind of benchmark you want to go off. Okay. So, how do you attract the proper freelancer, right? This is where more research is going to come into play, okay? So first, you want to explain in detail what you expect from them, right? This saves us time. Second, filter out spammers by adding requirements. Include pricing in job posts to filter freelancers, okay? So let me actually show you a couple of templates that I have here for you, okay? So template number one, um, this is us looking for a recorder, right? So creator for how-to tutorial videos, long-term native US English accent required. It does, doesn't mean that they need to be from the US, right? But for example, people from the Philippines have amazing English and that's where I love to hire people from, right? Philippines. You can see template. I'm not going to read it all out for you, uh, but this is a, just a template for you to make it easier for you on the hiring process. So you can just literally copy paste this add your um, name, right? Payment terms, uh, change some things up if you want here. And you can just use this to post on Upwork or wherever you are, right? Once again, this is going to be in that Google Drive folder uh, below, okay? Second template, you can also use this, video editor for tutorial videos. Same thing, but slightly different. Make sure to edit it for your own liking. Um, yep. Now, once you've posted this, Okay, people are going to start applying and there's going to be a lot of people applying for, for, for the job. So what you need to do is you need to be able to screen these freelancers. Okay, now what do you want to do is you want to send them examples and your expectations. What do you expect from them? You want to ask for a free sample so you can say, hey, uh, here is a topic that I want you to create a video for. Can you please do it for free so we can see how the quality is going to end up, uh, turn out? Okay, you want to confirm with them pricing and payment method. Okay, so maybe you're paying them weekly or bi-weekly, okay, and then you want to say, okay, it's $3 per video. Just make sure that everyone is on the same page, okay? Uh, oh, piercing. <laughs> pricing. Pricing depends on, of course, video quality and video length, but we've talked about this uh, just a little bit before this, okay? This is also a screening template, right? So uh, here... Uh, here you can see that, hey, thanks for showing interest in how to tutorial videos create a job, right? I'm excited to learn more. Uh, you send them examples. This is what we're looking for. If you want to move forward, can you please create a short sample for us, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I'm going to leave this screening template for you down in the folder, okay? So you can use these to literally just hire people, screen people, and you're like pretty much ready to go, all right? You don't even need to figure out how to do this. Optimizing your team, okay? So now once you start hiring people, the next step is to start optimizing, okay? So there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Deadlines, importance, bonuses, negative incentives, keep them happy and check in regularly, okay? So first thing, you wanna have deadlines for people, right? People are lazy, people don't wanna do things, so you wanna say, hey, I'm expecting you to create this video by this date. And if they don't, then you have two things, right? Or you have one thing. You say, okay, if you don't do that, then we will have to cut the payment for you, right? And if you do do it and you do it well and maybe you do it earlier, we can have a bonus for you, right? So a stick and a carrot, right? Incentives for people, okay? Keep them happy. You want to keep your freelancers happy because, you know, there's a big churn, like a churn rate uh, of freelancers online. So if you keep them happy and you really try to create like this team that's going to work for you long term, 
you want to keep them happy, okay? And you want to check in regularly to say, hey, how are you guys doing? How is everything? Do you need anything? Et cetera, et cetera, all right? These are the things to keep in mind when you're going to be optimizing your team. Now, we get to the juicy, interesting part, keyword research. What are you going to be creating the videos about, all right? That's very important because you can be making videos about something, never get any views, never make any money, and just lose money. That's also the case. That can happen. But if you take what I'm about to explain here, you can run with it really, really well, okay? First thing to understand is something which is called RPM, okay? Right here on my channel, you can see the revenue for every 1,000 views RPM is $5, okay? So because my channel gets 700,000 views in November, right? If you multiply 7,000 views by $5, that's where you get three and a half thousand dollars. Okay, makes sense. So revenue RPM stands for revenue per mil. That's how much you get paid for 1000 views. All right, makes sense. Now, different audiences have different RPMs, different topics on YouTube have different RPMs. So what do I mean by this? That means that, for example, if I make a video talking about banks, comparing banks, for example, or how to do something on a bank, right, especially in the US, that's going to have a very high RPM because the audience has a lot of purchasing power. If I talk, for example, about gaming or vlogs or something else that doesn't really involve money, then the RPM is going to be very low, okay? So why is that? Purchasing power and intent. Oh, purchasing power and intent. Like I said, gaming has a lot less money in it than does finance, okay? You wanna focus on audience rather than just the topic, okay? So for example, 35 plus people age in the USA who are frustrated with cable TV and want to cut the cord, for example, right? That's a very specific audience. So now think to yourself, what could these people potentially be looking for, right? Now you can, be, you can start being creative, you can be, okay, what are the alternatives to cable TV? YouTube TV, Hulu TV, right? Um, Xfinity, whatever. Okay, cool, let's look at the topics there. How to subscribe to YouTube TV. YouTube TV versus Sling TV, what, which one is better? So you start to get the idea, right? First start with the audience and then figure out what are they searching for, right? The, the more targeted you can get with the audience who have the most money, the better your uh, videos and the more money you're gonna be making, okay? So higher value audience means higher RPM, means more money for you, okay? Now, another thing you need to understand is something which is called transactional content. I made a mistake here, but I'm not going to be correcting it. Transactional content. What is transactional content? It's something that people watch right before making a purchase. For example, Shopify versus Wix. Now, think about it. If a person is searching for Shopify versus Wix, what does that tell us about him? That means that this person is looking, deciding between should I go with Shopify or should I go with Wix? And this could be the last little push he needs, your video, in order to decide between the two. So transactional content is very powerful for us and for affiliate marketing and for making money because we can guide the person into the direction that we want or which we think is kind of more, um, just we, we, can, we, can, we don't have to be like biased about, okay, you have to go with Shopify, you have to go with Wix, but we can just present the information and let them decide what, where they want to go, right? And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're there right before they're about to make a purchase and we have our affiliate link to say, hey, if you would like to sign up to Shopify, you can use my link down in the description, okay? So that's transactional content. Okay, let's talk now about the different methods to find untapped keywords. So I'm going to move myself right here. Methods to find untapped keywords. First, YouTube search bar, ABC method. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to YouTube right here, incognito, and we start searching for Instagram how to, okay? For example, what you're seeing right here, right? This is not random. This means that people are actually searching for this. And the higher it is right here to the top, that means that the more people are looking for it, right? The, that means that more there's more demand for this. And the lower it is, the lower the demand is. But if it's showing up right here, that means it has a lot of demand, right? And <laughs> if you manage to make a video that is going to get like the first position for this, it's gonna 
bring a lot of views and a lot of money. So let's click on the first one, how to reply to a message. You might be thinking, what? <laughs> how is that even like, why would anyone search for it? Okay, so we have these three videos from these three channels. Go uh, Gauge and Gadgets, How to Digital, and Apple Guy. Okay, this video was posted two months ago. It has 4,000 views. This video was posted three years ago. It has 842,000 views. And this video was posted nine months ago and it has 234,000 views, okay? So this is a very competitive keyword and I would probably not recommend you go for this keyword because the chances that you are going to rank, which means that you're gonna be on the first three positions is very low, okay? So instead, what you wanna do is you wanna start going deeper research, right? So for example, Instagram, how do... How do you know if someone blocked you? How do you log in, right? So these are different ones, right? So you want to just figure out how to go deeper and deeper and look for keywords that have demand but don't have a good video or don't have a video at all, okay? So that's the YouTube search bar method. And there's so many different, like, this is just scratching the surface, right? But I'm gonna go deeper now. Analyzing channel data. Okay, so methods for untapped keyword research. So w once you start posting, once you start getting data, right, some videos are gonna work and some videos are not gonna work. That's just part of the game. So what do you wanna do is you wanna look at your channel data daily and see, okay, what's making me the most money? Which video? And then you wanna double down on that. You wanna find related topics. So let's say that a video like YouTube TV versus Hulu TV is making me the most money, right? So then I can be like, okay, cool. What other videos are like that? I can say, okay, YouTube TV versus Sling TV, YouTube TV versus um, Xfinity, you know, and then I can reverse it. Then I can say, you know, Hulu TV versus Sling. So there's so many different possibilities that I can go about thinking this. But looking at the existing data is very powerful and you can double down and look for alternatives, all right? Google Trends, all right? So what are people talking about, right? Seasonal searches, Christmas, Halloween, right? Um, Halloween costumes for two, Halloween costumes for three, Halloween costumes for a big group of people, Christmas lights, uh, where to buy the best Christmas lights, what are the best Christmas lights. So look at Google Trends. I think I have it right here also opened up. So this is a newsletter from Google Trends that I recommend you also subscribe to. And like uh, a couple of times per week, they send these things and you get a very good idea about what are people actually searching for, what's like popping, right? What, what's breaking out? And you can also stay in the loop about the whole world and what's going on, right? I actually really like it. Um, so for example, we can see right here, uh, if we scroll down, right? How to wrap a plant for a gift, how to wrap a hoodie as a gift, okay? And this is, just gives you an idea, are the top trending searches for how to wrap a gift, right? So there are many more things, right? You would never think about that, how to wrap a gift, right? But then people search and then they have different hoodie, plans, etc. right? So you can see that for, and then we can go to ABC method and we can say, okay, we can use this, how to wrap a gift. And then here in the three dots, we can go how to wrap a A, how to wrap a B, right? So let me show you how to wrap a, and then we put like this, a gift. Okay, and then we maybe remove this, this spot right here how to wrap a, uh, how to wrap a, <laughs> a dumpling, a dress, a dirt bike, right? How to wrap a hoodie as a gift, okay? And then if we remove this, okay, so there we have it. How to wrap, uh, how to wrap a book as a gift, how to wrap a bottle as a gift, a pen, a cup, a handbag, a purse, et cetera, et cetera. So go through these keywords one by one, See where there is like not a good video. So let's say, for example, how to wrap a book as a gift. Maybe there is probably, right, how to wrap a pen, a cup, a handbag. So let's say, for example, how to wrap a um, keychain painting necklace. Let's say, for example, book. Let's just, let's just see. How to wrap a book, right? So you can see right here, this video was posted three years ago. It has 620,000 views and the person is actually showing how to do it. So it'll be pretty hard to outrank this uh, because you actually need to show it <laughs> yourself physically. You can't just get away um, by talking about it, right? I feel like. Uh, but other than that, if, you know, for example, you like to wrap gifts or you can get someone else to create it, you can easily, 
easily rank for this and you can see the search volume there is crazy. And the reason I say easily is because there's no other video showing you how to do it. Like there's just one and it's not even optimized for search engine optimization. It's just how to wrap a book. So if you say, if you make a, a video just like this one and you say how to wrap a book as a gift, you can be able to rank and you'll be able to get a lot of search volume. Okay, makes sense. Um, then if we come back here, we can scroll down and we can see that, for example, you know, how to become a real estate agent, um, how to do, how to do split screen on Mac, right? So let's, let's look at what's this, how to do split screen. And then we have all these other ideas, right? On Google Chrome, on GTA 5, right? And by the way, another little tip for you here, if you click report search predictions, you can just then copy this, copy like this, bum, and now you can import it into a Google Sheet. That's it, right? So if I go back here and go to my management sheet, I can just paste it and voila, I have all of my topics here. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, so let's say on Mac, on MacBook Air, on Marvel, on Madden, right? So just on, was it Mac? I think so, right? On Mac. Yeah, so let's see how this is. How to do split screen on Mac? How to use split screen view on Mac? How to split screen on MacBook? So there are quite a few videos showing you how to do this. Uh, and the first one is from Apple support. So I'd, I wouldn't probably go for this because it's quite competitive. And if Apple support has a video on that two years ago and have a million views, it'll be pretty hard to outrank that, right? But this can give you a good starting point about what to do, right? So for example, how to do split screen, um, on, you know, CapCut, right? CapCut is, is, is popping. Create split screen, right? CapCut. So I think on vertical video, I think this is a pretty good keyword right here. Why? Because the first video that is ranking six months ago has 26,000 views and the channel, if we check to take a look at the channel, it only has 5,000 subscribers. So the authority of the channel is not that big, right? And it's still ranking number one for this, uh, term and the video title is not even properly optimized for search engine optimization. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So if you make a video and you title it "How to Do Split Screen in CapCut," and then you say the same thing in the description as the first line, and then you say the words in the first three seconds in this video, I'm going to show you how to do split screen in CapCut, and then you actually show it. Voila, your video is ranking and you're making money. Please tell me that makes sense, right? <laughs> I'm not being crazy. I mean, there's so many people who do this, right? That's Google Trends, super powerful. Related questions from Google results feed. So we go back here. How do I create a second Instagram account with the same email? I searched it up and you can see right here, yours truly, that's my name, my channel, right? I made these two videos. Uh, I posted them on 18.7.2023. Is that July? I think that's July, right? So very simple video, straight to the point. I'm ranking both videos. And what I mean by related keywords is here, right here. This isn't finished, of course, but you know what I mean. Like if you search something and then you have related questions, can I make two Instagram accounts with the same email? How can I set up a second Instagram account? How to create a new Instagram account for an existing account? How do you make a secret Instagram account, right? So how do you make a secret Instagram account? So let's see, how do you make a secret Instagram, how to make a secret Instagram account. Okay, so someone has done it a year ago, 5.9 thousand views. Um, and that's the only one there is. This is the only video that has the exact uh, title that we're looking for, right? The views are not that great. So it's only 6,000 in one year, which is okay, but it's not crazy, okay? So that's the idea, right? And this channel has 114,000 subscribers. So, and they have 12,000 views. So these guys are really, really pushing volume onto this channel, all right? Um, but you can use related questions. There's a, those are great. That's how, by the way, that's how related questions is how I found this topic in the first place. That's how I found it. Because oftentimes, if you just go deeper into it, you will be able to get like, and also if you just open it one time and then you close it, you're gonna get more. 
can people see my secret Instagram account? Can someone have a hidden Instagram account? You open this, it gives you more questions and more questions and more questions, right? There's unlimited number of questions on the internet. Next, answerthepublic.com. Let me show you. This is great, okay? So you sign up to answerthepublic.com. I'm paying, I think, 9 or $10 per month, and they're great, right? So let's say, for example, you search for Instagram, Instagram, and then you go search. Then we're going to give it a second to load. And this is a very powerful tool, you guys, because what's going to happen now, it's going to give us all of these um, questions that people are searching for on the internet, right? So we can either visualize them like this, but what I like to do is I like to click data, right? It's going to give us the search volume, crazy search volume, okay cost per click, but this is more for like advertisers, right? Um, and then we can just start seeing what people are searching for. You can then also export this. So you can click here, right? Then what I like to do, I like to go to sheet new. Then I like to file, open, upload. You upload the file that you just downloaded from Answer the Public. Okay, I like to hide these. And then what you can do is you can search, for example, by, you can sort here, search volume, you can sort by Z to A, right? Let me just put this away here. And then you can also click like this, just double click on it, see data, data cleanup, remove duplicates, remove them, okay? 23 were removed, right? So then we can start seeing, okay, Instagram video download, 20, 250,000 searches, right? Alphabeticals, whatever, right? Then you can also have questions. So if we go back here, we can see that there are also a bunch of questions, right? So how, so if you click B, right? And then you can have, uh, how did I do about it? How, was it data, tools, create a filter? I think so, or conditional formatting. Oh, damn, <laughs> remove filter, where is it? Yeah, modifier, so then here you can actually uh, clear all, and then you can choose, for example, can, click OK, and it's gonna give you all the questions that people are searching for with can, right? Um, can Instagram account be deleted? How Instagram changed society? How Instagram ruined society? When Instagram, why, when Instagram is not opening, uh, and so forth, right? So then you can just go one by one through all these questions, through all these different modifiers, through all the different apps, and it's just unlimited, unlimited, right? <laughs> unlimited questions. And we use that to find questions to make videos, so then we can rank them and make money, okay? It's all interrelated. Answerthepublic.com is great. News, you wanna be in the loop. What's going on in the markets? There's a new crypto shitcoin. Great, people are probably searching for how to buy, sell, trade it, right? Now the market is up and down or whatever, and there's always something new happening. There's a new software, ChatGPT, BARD, uh, crypto, whatever it is, look from it from the perspective, not like when something is happening, you wanna get into the mindset of, okay, how can I, what, what could people be searching for in that thing? And if you get into the habit of doing that, the whole world is gonna open up for you, okay? So different angles of keywords, how to best tool for something or best da -da -da for da -da -da, right? Tips and tricks for tutorial for all these different things, They're different angles. How do people search for, right? There's so many things people search for, right? You can use power words after how to, such as connect, disable, implement, remove, open, right? So for example, if I go back here, I can say how to connect, right? PC for controller to phone or smartwatch to phone. Um, then I can use the ABC method, how to connect uh, F uh, Facebook page to Instagram. Boom, how to, connect, how to connect Facebook page to Instagram business accounts. How to connect Facebook page to Instagram, how to connect Instagram to Facebook page, right? So the reason these guys are doing these keywords is because there's a lot of volume, so they're getting a lot of views, right? Five months ago, 75,000, one year ago, 200,000 views, right? But you can go deeper and you can find keywords that have a lot of, have demand, but don't have a lot of. And by the way, another trick for you, if you've searched something, you can just click one time in the bar 
And this will give you these predict uh, these searches right here, right? So connect Facebook page to Instagram problem, right? How to create a Facebook business page, how to create an Instagram page and so forth, right? So every time you search for something, you can just click here once again, and then it will give you all these different uh, ideas here as well, right? So power words, think, just Google different power words or go to a, like a encyclopedia and look for the different power words and then just go off from there. Uh, you can also make comparison videos. I actually love love these to do as well. So for example, Shopify versus Wix. And the reason why is because you can also add an affiliate uh, link to this. I like these a lot. Uh, review videos. So best UK bank in 2024, for example, or best payment processor for drop shipping or best payment processor for small business. Right? I think I might be ranking for that, by the way. Best payment processor for small business. Yeah. I'm ranking for this six months ago, 1.7 thousand views. There we go. And if I click here, I'm going to get all these other uh, ideas that I can do as well. Okay. Uh, this is just scratching the surface. Like I said, right? There are so many more ways and like it's, new ways are coming up all the time. Uh, use Answer the Public and get inspiration, right? Just get inspiration, get into this, and you'll be able to figure out your own ways. Like you'll be able to figure out your own ways on how to do this. Maybe you're going outside like i was just tell you a story i was going outside and i saw those you know electric scooters we have like tear and lime and something else and i was thinking huh they have a referral program so then i i looked up like tier how to and there was like two searches for the people are looking for i did it and now forever i have like credits on my um electric scooter thing so i get it for like 50 percent off or i get like credits or something like that same with food delivery and all of those right there's just unlimited number of things so look around yourself as well Okay, but now you're starting to research keywords. However, not all the keywords are worth pursuing, right? So then we, let's talk about how to validate keywords, right? Are they worth pursuing? This is very important, by the way, because this is where a lot of people go wrong because like if you just start blasting keywords um, and you don't validate them, you're gonna maybe lose money because if you just start doing very competitive keywords, your videos are never going to make get any views or make any money, right? So you're just gonna lose money. So you gotta be very specific about which videos you're gonna be creating, which topics you wanna to go after, right? So first, understand the principles of supply and demand. Basic economics, right? Adam Smith. If, there, if, if demand increases, supply is gonna increase, right? And sometimes there's a discrepancy, right? So what we are looking for is we're looking for a gap in the market. That's what I call it, right? We're looking for what keyword, what topic people are searching for and they're, they're not satisfied, right? So we're looking for how, where can we fit in and where can we satisfy an existing demand and provide them with a product, aka our video, and then get part of that search traffic, okay? Supply and demand. People look for, we provide, right? If you provide something that people are not looking for, no one's gonna be watching that video, okay? Find a gap in the market where there is demand, but the audience is not satisfied. And if you do that and you create a good video, I guarantee, guarantee that you're going to get views and money. Okay? Promise. The more search demand there is for a keyword, the more videos will be made for that keyword, right? So, for example, if you look for, you know, Instagram, how to... Uh, you know, reply to a message like we talked about, right? There are going to be so many videos, right? And if we like, if we search for how to reply to a message, let me just move myself here. Uh, how to reply to a message on Instagram. Uh, how to reply on Instagram. How to reply to, how to reply. Okay, this is not working because I'm not searching it properly, but... Let's say that how to reply on Instagram message. And then I copy this. All right. So, okay. So there are six videos or six mentions of this. Um, but overall, this is a very competitive keyword, right? So find the reply option. Right? This guy is doing, by the way, really well as well. He has 7.3 thousand videos, but he makes the videos himself. So this is not optimal. And what we want to do is we want to outsource the video production so we become more like business owners, business managers, okay? Uh, your job is to find a gap in the market, like I said, right? What does that mean? That means finding keywords where demand exceeds supply, okay? 
SEO optimization, the videos that show up in the first, second, or third position, how well are they optimized for SEO? Remember that I showed you that example that uh, wrap a gift, how to, how to wrap a book as a gift, right? That video had so many views, it was published like a long time ago, but it was not properly optimized for what people are searching for, you know? If people are searching for how to wrap a book as a gift, we want to show them a video that says exactly the same thing, how to wrap a book as a gift. Do not reinvent the wheel. Whatever people are searching for, exactly show it the way they're searching it for, okay? Even, like, don't overthink this. Even if it might, might sound weird to you, don't overthink it. Just go, go with it as people are searching for. That will increase your CTR, which stands for click-through rate. Do they have the exact keyword in the title description? If the videos are not well optimized for SEO, for us, that is an opportunity to rank that video, all right? The channels that are ranking for your search term, how much authority do they have, okay? How big is the channel sub counts? So, for example, sometimes you can find a, a keyword that is that only video ranking for that keyword, right? And then you click on the channel and they might have like, you know, 500 subscribers, right? That means that's a good sign because that means that if that small channel is ranking for that keyword, that means that there's a lot of demand for that keyword. And even if a small one can do it, you can do it as well, okay? However, if you know the top three channels are all like you know, 100, 200, 3,000 or a million view, uh, sub counts, then it might be a little ha hard to outrank them, right? Uh, what about the video and thumbnail quality? That's also important. Can you make a better video? More clear audio, less fluff, straight to the point. So oftentimes I can outrank a video uh, just because I have better quality of the thumbnail, it's just more straightforward and I have better uh, video quality, right? If you open up a video and the person is like, hey guys, welcome to my channel. The weather is good. Here's my cat. Oh, I'm drinking my coffee, right? Oh, and by the way, let's get into how to delete your Instagram account. No, of course not. People are looking for how to delete your Instagram account, want to hear, hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to delete your Instagram accounts. Step one, step two, step three, bum, right? Always look at that from the perspective as well, right? And here is a little quote from Benjamin Graham. This is a, a mentor of Warren Buffett. And he said that in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. So if you focus on the quality of your videos, if you focus on actually providing valuable and helpful information to uh, an audience, to the end user, you're always going to win in the long run, okay? Remember that. All right, let's talk about different keyword research tools, okay? Because it's cool to do it yourself and all, but there's also a lot of tools that help you do that. Youautocompleteme.io, data.ai, keyword, Google Keyword Planner, vidIQ, Answer the Public, Ahrefs, and Moz. I'm not gonna go over every single one of these uh, tools. I personally use Answer the Public. I use uh, Google Keyword Planner. I used to use Data AI. I used to use autocompleteme.io. But at this point, I have so much data on my YouTube channels that I can just literally go off my data and just gut instinct because like, I'm pretty good at this, right? But for you just starting out and you're kind of like thinking, what should I do? These are very good places to start. So go around, play, play with these tools, okay? And they will give you a lot of different, Ahrefs and Moz are expensive. All the other ones are not expensive at all. All right, the Google Keyword Planner is free. Just sign up to Google Ads Manager, uh, Google Ads account, and that's it. Okay, important notes. Optimize for viewer satisfaction. Always remember, if you focus on the end user, on the customer, like Jeff Bezos says, you know, Amazon was never uh, oriented or, or focused on the competition, right? Amazon was always focused on the customer. And because they were so obsessed with the customer and they made the customer satisfied, in the long run, that's how it starts to snowball. So the same thing for us. We want to optimize for viewer satisfaction. Whatever the viewer is looking for, we want to provide it to them without any fluff, with good quality, right straight to the point. Viewer satisfaction is number one. Number two, do not unnecessarily stretch the video. There's a lot of talk out there about average view duration and, you know, we want to prolong our videos and that. So you will see there's so many opportunities to rank because there's so many shit channels out there that are like, hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to. So let's get started. All right, guys, the first thing you want to do, come on. Just get straight to the point. In this video, I'm going to X, Y, and Z. Step one, two, three, bam, done. That's what we want, okay? Straight to the point. Make videos as if you were the customer. How would you want to make the video? How would you want to watch that video, 
right? If you're looking for just that answer, that's exactly how you want to make that video, okay? Implement the keyword phrase. Oh my God, I'm making so many mistakes. Implement the keyword phrase in the introduction and only provide relevant information, all right? And what I mean by this, implement the keyword phrase. So for example, if the, your video is something like, you know, let's go for example, how to overlay a video on CapCut, right? Then you wanna start by saying, in this video, I'm going to show you how to overlay a video in CapCut. Bam, that's it. And then you just go step by step. Important notes. Oh, this is the same thing, sorry. <laughs> oh, there's more. Okay, uh, only provide one furniture. Okay, keep thumbnails simple and easy to understand. This is very important. So the way I like to do it is, let me actually show you. The way I like to do it is I just like to keep them I always include a face because a face is important um, because people are attracted to people, evolutionary, right? If we see a, a face, it's really hard to not look at it and um, keep it simple, right? Bright colors, show the logos, show the thing, right? So this is my really useful template right here. If you scroll down, right? Amazon Fire Stick not working on Sony TV, not working on Sony TV and then Fire Stick, right? So just keep it simple. You can replicate this template as well. I don't mind. <laughs> Use a face of an attractive person in the thumbnail. We are social animals and we are attracted to beautiful faces. Use that to your advantage. Understand evolutionary psychology. Include the exact keyword phrase in the title and first sentence of description. SEO, we've talked about this, about this earlier. Now, let's talk about affiliate marketing. How to make sure that your efforts of content creation don't go to waste and you actually make more money with the same content and not less, all right? That's what we want, more money. So you earn a commission promoting other people's products, right? This is what I've talked about right here, uh, share a sale, right? So let's say, for example, let me show you, like I have nothing to hide, right? So this is my share of sale. You can see that yesterday, automatically I, a transaction was generated for Nor Northwest Registered Agent LLC, right? If we go down here, you can see these are all the commissions that I was able to get with all these uh, businesses. They used to be called inkfile.com, now they're called busy.com. I preferred inkfile, by the way, inkfile, if you're watching this. Um, and you can see right here, these are all the commissions. I brought them yesterday at 3 p.m. I was in the gym. I got them an $89 commission uh, sale and they paid me $150 for that, right? Order the feed, I brought them a $185 sale. They paid me $15 for that, etc. Right. And then what happens is they pay you. So, for example, let's talk about like uh Orthothe or Northwest Register Agent, right? So if I go to my channel right here and I search for sandals or shoes, right? You can see right here. Uh, best shoes for standing all day. This is actually the one of the videos that is ranking, right? So this video has 7.7 thousand views four months ago posted and you can see these links right here. These are affiliate links, right? So if someone clicks on, they watch the video, they're like, oh great, yeah, this is great information, I love it. And then I show them the shoes and they're like, ooh, I want the edge water. So they go ahead, they click on the edge water, it takes them to OrthoFeet, right? And then right here, you can see that the affiliate campaign, so this sale is gonna get attributed to me, right? So if they go ahead, click this link and buy something, I'm gonna make the money as well, right? So that's kind of how it works. So you earn a commission promoting other people's products. Great way to find high RPM topics and earn commissions from those advertisers. Couple of different um, sites that I recommend to use, okay? Shareasale.com, that's the one I just showed you. We also have partnerstack.com, impact.com, cj.com, CJ and Amazon Associates, right? Amazon Associates, I just wanna tell you that it has a small percentage, like commission percentage, it's only like a couple of percent, but if you compound the videos and the clicks, you will get, you'll build a crazy cash cow because Amazon has the highest conversion rate on the internet, period, right? So with Amazon, you just if you just send them a lot of clicks their way, there is a 100% chance that you are gonna get paid. And the more clicks you send, the more money you're gonna make, right? So you can just solely focus on making like product review videos for Amazon, do them as much as possible, figure out a system that you can do like an automated version with AI, and you're off to the races, okay? So these are kind of the things that I recommend you sign up for, and then you can reverse engineer it. So like, let's say for example, you go on to shareasale.com, you go to search for merchants, right? And then you can see, for example, that 
you know, power rank. And then you can say, you know, I got declined from Reebok, <laughs> but let's get pending approval. Okay, busy, that's ink file. I have already made a bunch of videos for them. Um, orthothy, that's the one I told you about. So you see that you're not going to get accepted to many of them, but the ones you do get accepted for, uh, those are the ones you should do. So, right? So o OHM Connect. So if we go ahead and we search for OHM Connect, OHM Connect, OHM Connect review, right? So let's see. Not a single video talking about, okay, one video, OHM, how much, uh, how much can you earn with this app, right? So one guy, one year ago, 550 views. So yeah, not the best, but you get the idea. You can just go through this one by one. Greenworks tools, right, as well. You can also look, like click through and see what is it that they're promoting, right? I mean, what is the business about? So this is like... Uh, trimmers and lawnmowers and stuff. So then if people are searching for, you know, for example, best lawnmower for uneven ground, right? One and a half thousand views one year ago, right? But when you're doing videos for affiliate marketing, you shouldn't be too concerned about the view counts, right? Because this is very targeted. You can see if the ads are showing up, this means that this search term is like, with a shopping intent, right? So the people who are looking for this are in the market for a loan mower, loan mower with uneven ground. So even if you only get one and a half thousand views in one year, like you're probably gonna get at least 10 sales, right? And if each sale you're gonna get like, I don't know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, that's 500 to $1,000 per uh, for this one video that got you one and a half thousand views, right? You get the idea. All right, uh, and what you also wanna do is you wanna implement a CTA. CTA stands for a call to action in video, right? So for example, you say, hey, check out this product on Amazon for your convenience. The link for the product is down in the description of this video, right? That's it, you just say a simple mention, but it's important to say it because if you don't say it, your click-through rate or how many people actually click is gonna be less. You need to tell people what you want them to do, okay? It's the first link in the description and also the pinned comment. Bam, straight up. So what are the next steps? Well, with the information provided, you are able to do it on your own. I've given you everything, <laughs> everything I know. I Like I promised, I didn't hide away anything. I showed you my channel, my affiliates, all the different tools, how to do it, all of that, right? So you can take this, you can do it on your own, no problem. However, if you want me to help you implement this, you can also book a call with me and we can have a conversation. And if I'm able to help you, then let's talk and I'll be able to help you with this, right? You can click uh, a button underneath this video or there's going to be a calendar underneath this video. Book a call with me and if you want me to help you implement this, let's talk.